Hi, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. Welcome to my video on how to answer true, false, not given questions. This type of question comes up regularly in the IELTS reading test. Many students fear it and I'll explain why in a minute. However, if you learn the tips and practice the step-by-step -step strategy I show you in this video, you'll soon improve your skills at answering it. Here's what we'll be covering. An explanation of true, false, not given questions. The big challenge. The difference between this type of question and yes, no, not given questions. Eight top tips. The proven strategy. And a step-by-step -step example and model answer. First, let's look at what you have to do for true, false, not given questions. You'll be given a set of statements and a text. Your task is to decide which of the following applies to the information in each statement. If the statement agrees with the information in the text, the answer is true. If it disagrees with it or contradicts it, the answer is false. If the information in the statement is not mentioned in the text, the answer is not given. Here's a set of sample instructions and statements from a real past IELTS reading test paper for illustration. So the two things you need to do are to understand the information in the statements, then decide if it's true, false or not given according to the text. The challenge with true, false, not given type questions is that for some statements, that is the not given ones, you'll be searching for information that's not there. This is the first reason why some people fear it. It's very easy to waste a huge amount of time going over and over the text to check that you haven't missed the information. The second challenge is the unfamiliarity of this type of question. Most people will have looked at true and false statements in a text back in their school days, but may have no experience of searching for information that isn't actually included. Hence, it's extra important to have a strategy that gives you the confidence to make your decision and move swiftly on. Some students get confused between true, false, not given questions and yes, no, not given questions. So I'll quickly explain the difference. It's all about the type of information contained in the text. For true, false, not given, the text will contain factual information about a topic. For yes, no, not given, the text will contain the opinions, views or beliefs of the writer or other people who are mentioned. Now for my top eight tips. Tip one. The answers appear in the same order in the text as the order of the statements. This is not the case with some other types of questions, so it's important to know. This information will help you to locate the answers. Tip 2. You don't need to read the whole text. First, you'll scan for keywords, and then you'll read only the section containing them in detail, as this is where the answer will be. Tip 3. There will be at least one of each answer type, that is, at least one true answer, at least one false answer, and at least one not given answer. So, if you don't have at least one of each when you've completed the question, you've made a mistake. Tip 4. Watch out for distractors. Be aware that the exam setters love to use distractors to really test you. A prime example is qualifying words such as every, all, some, most, a few, always, often, occasionally. These single words can completely change the meaning of a sentence. Compare these two sentences. Tian Tian often meets up with her friends after work. Tian Tian occasionally meets up with her friends after work. In the second sentence, just one word has been changed, but it gives it a very different meaning. 
In true false not given questions, the meaning of the statement must be an exact match with the information in the text to be true. Tip 5. Also be on the lookout for qualifying words that express possibility or doubt, such as seem, suggest, believe, claim, possibly, probably. Again, they can totally alter the meaning of a statement. For example, scientists now claim that several different species of humans evolved on the Earth. Scientists now know that several different species of humans evolved on the Earth. Now for the final three tips. Tip 6. The statements will not be a word-for-word -word match to the information in the text. It's the meaning that you're trying to match, not the specific vocabulary. Both synonyms and paraphrasing will be used extensively to test your reading skills. Tip 7. Ignore any knowledge you have of the topic. Answer only according to the information in the text. The test is not an assessment of your knowledge of the topic, but only of your ability to read and understand the information in the text. So, if you happen to know from your own knowledge that a particular statement is true, but this is not stated in the text, your answer must be not given. It's easy to get caught out like this, so be careful. Tip 8. Remember that at least one answer will be not given. This means that you will be searching for information that is not there. As already mentioned, it's easy to waste time searching and searching for the information that you're never going to find because it simply isn't included. Use the strategy I'm about to show you to quickly come to a decision about each statement and move on. Next, we come to the strategy for answering true-false not given questions. I'll quickly go through it, then I'll show you how to use it step by step. First, read the instructions carefully. Double check whether it's a true-false not given question or a yes-no not given question. Next. Read the statements and try to understand the meaning of each. Do this before reading the text. Underline key words and have a quick think about possible synonyms that might appear in the text. Also note any qualifying words in the statements, such as all, some, always or often. This will make your brain alert for them when you come to scan the text. Then. Reread statement 1 and scan the first paragraph, maybe two, for the key words or synonyms of them. Scanning will locate where the answer is located, but detailed reading of this section of the text is now needed to decide if the specific information you're looking for is true, false or not given. Now read in detail and make your decision. Remember to consider these three things. To be true, the information must exactly match, even if the words are different. Look carefully for qualifying words that might change the meaning. If you are struggling to find the answer, it's probably because it isn't there, that is, it's not given. Repeat this process for the remaining questions. Now for our practice question. This example is not from a real IELTS reading test paper. I created it myself to demonstrate the strategy I've just outlined and to give you an opportunity to practice it. The text in your test will be longer and may have five or six statements. Here are the instructions and statements. The next two slides contain the text. I've had to divide it due to lack of space. However, I created PDFs of both the instructions and statements and the text that you can download to make them easier to work on. You'll find the link to them in the notes below this video. Here's the text. Don't read it yet. Remember, you need to do some work on the statements first. We'll come back to this text in a minute. So, this is how I answered the question. My step-by-step -step strategy. Having read the instructions and tried to understand the meaning of the statements, 
I now focus on the first statement, which is, raising levels of literacy was the main theme of the conference. The key word I select to scan for is conference. I'm fairly sure I'll find this, or a synonym, because it has an article word in front of it, the, which makes it the subject of the sentence. I scan the first main paragraph and find conference twice. I read both sentences that contain it in detail. I'm searching for information that tells me that raising levels of literacy really was the main theme of this conference. However, the text clearly states that the conference was about the well-being of the pupils, not the level of literacy. The answer is therefore false. Next, I read the second statement and decide to scan for words connected to the internet, as this is what the statement is about. I continue scanning from the location of the last answer. Remember, the information will come in order in the text. I quickly spot the words social media, which appear twice. I read the two sentences in detail to look for any matching words or phrases. I also see the word teenagers, which is a synonym of young people. This is another clue that there's a match of information. However, I now need to decide the specific information in the text matches that of the statement. The wording is very different, but the text definitely states that social media, of which Facebook and Twitter are a major part, can have a negative effect on young people's lives. So the statement is true. I now read statement 3 again, to make sure I understand it, then choose my keywords. In this case, pets and mental health. I then scan for these. I easily find mental health, but there's no mention of pets in this part of the text. I do, however, spot the words animals and dog, which might have been used to paraphrase pets. I read in detail to get the meaning of the text. It seems to match the information in the statement but there's another very important keyword in the statement that I need to consider, and that's evidence. This means proof of the idea being suggested. While the ideas match, there's no direct evidence stated, so I mark the answer not given. Now you can see why not given answers can be challenging. Moving on to the last statement, I select government minister and national scheme as my keywords and continue scanning the rest of the text for them. In this case, it means the last paragraph. I don't find either of these phrases in the text, so I need to think about possible synonyms. Even if I know little about politics, I can guess that the Education Secretary is a government minister, so that's a start. I scan again, looking out for any other words related to government and politics. And in the final sentence, I also spot the word policy. It doesn't matter if I don't understand what this word means. All that matters is that I can work out from the context of the sentence that this word is probably relevant and indicates where the answer is located. I make an educated guess that a central dog policy is a match for a national scheme for promoting well-being dogs in schools and I reread the sentence to find my answer. The sentence states that there are no plans for a central dog policy, so the answer is false. And that's our question completed. I hope you found this strategy helpful. Now practice it with other true false not given questions. Once you get the hang of answering them, you'll be able to tackle them with confidence. Thank you for watching and I look forward to helping you with another of the 12 types of reading questions soon. Bye for now.